Thank you for joining. In the previous lesson, I explained model binding. In this lesson, we will implement DTOs in our project. And I will explain what a DTO is and why we use it. This diagram illustrates the current project sequence state, depicting how data retrieval and storage are achieved using Netcore 7 and Entity Framework. I want to mention that it's also possible for the application to interact with the database directly utilizing a DB context solely for data retrieval or storage purposes. However, this is provided for your information. Now let's return to our main topic. So the current project flow, as shown in the diagram and described in the text above it, is as follows. First, client sends a request to the application, which is picked up by Kestrel. Kestrel triggers the controller associated with the request. The controller uses the DB context to retrieve the requested data from the database, if necessary. Next, the controller makes the necessary changes to the data. And the controller uses the DB context and models to map data to save the changes to the database, if necessary. Finally, the controller formats the data and returns it to the client. The specific flow of a request will vary depending on the needs of the application. However, in general, it aligns with the description provided in accordance with the diagram on your screen. In simpler terms, we have just sent the entire model, the complete entity object, to a client. This approach can be problematic, especially if the entity object is large or contains sensitive data. In such cases, we need a way to control which portion of the entity is provided to the client. The solution is called a DTO, or a Data Transfer Object. It allows us to send only the data that client needs. Instead of sending the entire dataset, we split it into subsets and transfer them across the network from one layer of an application to another using DTOs. In short, this approach can enhance both performance and security. For example, let's consider our project's entity object named Solar System, which has the following properties. Yes, this data doesn't contain any passwords or other sensitive information. But for a moment, let's imagine there is a property named password. In this case, we would send the password to the client with every response instead of sending only the properties that the client needs. Using DTO will provide us following. Improved performance. Reduced bandwidth usage. Increased security. Improved flexibility. It will validate data, transform data add or remove properties, filter the data, encrypt or decrypt the data. This is the current diagram of our approach. The code of what we have now. To implement the DTO, we need to integrate it into the existing flow. Now, figuratively speaking, this newly introduced gray dot labeled 7a represents the DTO. And it's the ideal point to separate the entire dataset from the specific data that a client requires. Please also note the updated string at the top of the slide, which now includes the sequence involving the DTO. Implementing DTOs in this manner provides us with additional functionality and an added layer. This approach allows us to keep our controllers and other business logic classes clean and focused on their core responsibilities. Meanwhile, the DTOs play a role in data validation before it is sent to the client. So when we send to a client DTOs, we achieve valid data improved application quality, reduced errors, transformed data is required even in a different format, added or removed properties from the data, filtering, and encryption or decryption of data, among other benefits. In this way, DTOs are highlighting the advantages here, so the client will receive only what we wanted to receive, no more and no less. A client can send data either to the DTO or directly to the controller. However, it is generally considered best practices to send data to the DTO first and then pass the DTO to the controller. This approach offers several benefits, as mentioned earlier. Additionally, it helps decouple the API from the view layer, as the DTO serves as an intermediary. Since the diagram is a graphical representation, it may not perfectly reflect the actual location of the DTO. To ensure a complete understanding, let's write a few lines of code. The getAllAction method, as you can see, provides the entire data that we retrieved in Swagger during previous lessons. In this case, we don't have a DTO because we are sending all the available data. Now let's create a subfolder named DTO in the models folder. 
When it comes to the folder structure for DTOs, we have two primary approaches. The first approach is to create a DTO subfolder inside the model's folder to house our DTO classes. This is a common practice that promotes code organization and ease of maintenance, as you can see now. The second option is to establish a separate DTOs project within our solution. This approach can be particularly useful when dealing with the large numbers of DTOs or when you want to maintain a clear separation between your domain models and DTOs. However, in our case, we will opt for the first approach by using a DTO subfolder, as our DTOs are part of the project and not a separate project within the solution. Let's create a class and name it Solar System DTO. This DTO class will expose one or more properties from the model class. Since this data is not sensitive, we will be sending the entire dataset from this model via the DTO class. So let's proceed by copying and pasting all the properties into the DTO class. Indeed, it might seem redundant to have both the model and the DTO providing the same data, but it's essential for two reasons. First, it follows best practices in development. Second, it provides an excellent opportunity for learning and understanding the concept thoroughly. You can use your favorite method, such as for each loop or the to dictionary method, to iterate over these properties. There won't be much difference in the outcome, but with link it tends to be more concise. So I will amend the code to manipulate this collection using regular C -sharp and language integrated query. We will iterate over the properties using the select method and link. In case the using statement hasn't appeared, you can always press Ctrl and period to import the DTO inside the class, like this. Since the variable reference to the final data scope has changed, we need to return this data to the client. Simply add the DTO suffix here to correctly refer to the variable. Rest assured, before we conclude this lesson, I'll provide a comprehensive explanation of the entire path that the supply data takes after we finish this code. Additionally, let's change the message to success from the getAllAction method. Now, with the getAllAction method, we are providing the client with the data that is completely controlled by us. If necessary, we can quickly restrict it to meet specific requirements. The DTO is successfully implemented, and this code will work exactly as it did before. It is as simple as that. Next, using the same approach, we can apply the use of a DTO to the getById action method. The only difference here is that we don't need to create a list or perform an iteration since this method retrieves a single item using the single or default method. Now we can implement the code from the getAll method and then simply amend the return data for the getById method accordingly. So now we updated the state of these properties within the Solar System DTO class using values from the model properties. The getById method will continue to function as it did before, but now it's separated from the entire dataset with the addition of the DTO layer. Let's open Swagger and test both action methods, getAll and getById. I will execute it. GetAll has provided us with all the items we have in the database, and yes, there is a single item. Everything is correct. To test getById, we can either copy the GUID from Swagger or use the one from SQL Server Management Studio, whichever is more convenient for you. Let's paste it here and test it. We received a reply. And everything works as before. To learn how to trigger an error using an incorrect GUID, please refer to the previous lesson. Now let's open the code and I will explain everything in detail. In the getAllAction method, we created a variable named Solar Systems. This variable stores a reference to the injected HiKaiTalkDB context class, which has access to its properties. In this particular example, we accessed the Solar Systems property, which is, in fact, a property of the Solar System model. We then converted it into a list using a link and the select method. For each item in the Solar Systems variable, we named it Solar System and created an instance of the Solar Systems DTO. All the properties of the Solar System DTO were assigned values from the Solar System model. So this is the DTO in action. In the next lesson, we will complete crude operations action methods for the Solar Systems controller. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!